Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be doing something super exciting as always. Now, before we get started, I'm aware of how I sound right now. I recently got Invisalign and I'm going through it. I'm getting used to them and I sound really stupid, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be awful. Um, to my new viewers, I don't normally sound like this, but I am dealing with some new brackets behind my front teeth. So we're dealing with that. But yeah, let's get started. Today, we're gonna be redesigning the album cover of Owl City's Ocean Eyes. And this album came out in 2009. I was in like seventh or eighth grade. And when this album came out, I was obsessed with it. I loved every song and I just really enjoyed Owl City in general. And I think it, kind of carried with me to this day of my love for like a lot of synth heavy music. And I actually saw Al Zitty, uh when he opened for John Mayer. He like, I don't know, they had a, they toured together and they came to my local gross amphitheater and I saw Owl City there and I was really stoked about it. So let's talk about this album, okay? It's a really awesome album. If you haven't given it a listen or haven't listened to it since you were in middle school or whenever, I don't know what age you guys might be if you're watching this, but this album was like defining for most of like my eighth grade year. And I have a lot of favorites on this album. My all time favorite might be like Tip of the Iceberg. Is that what it's called? I should open it. Actually, let me open this up. Of course, Fireflies is a crowd favorite. I learned it originally on the piano. I bought sheet music for Fireflies so I could learn it. And I just, I used to play it on repeat and I had my iPod and I only had a few albums on it. And one of the albums that I did have on it was Ocean Eyes. Yeah, the tip of the iceberg. So that was one of my favorites. I loved Meteor Shower, The Saltwater Room. Yeah, I mean, all of these are bangers, absolute bangers. So I thought <laughs> for really no reason at all, since I love this album so much and it's like so nostalgic to me, why not redesign the album cover? Because the album cover is rough and in hindsight, I, I had such fond memories of this album cover and I thought it was really cool But then now it's like it did it was very of the time for uh, Late 2000s design and I tried to figure out who designed it by some uh, Some googling, but I couldn't really find anyone So I don't think it was done by an actual designer. It doesn't really look like it was so it might have been done by Adam Young himself So let's just look at take a take a gander at this. Okay, so this was released July 28, 2009 under Universal Republic Records. So July of 2009, it was before, the summer before I went into eighth grade. So the cover is a photograph of the Burj Al Arab, which is this, I think it's a hotel. Okay, the Burj Al Arab is a luxury hotel in Dubai in the UAE. And it's one of the tallest hotels in the world. Cool. Now, what does this actually mean for the album? Not really much. There is an ocean in the cover, but it doesn't really like hammer on the ocean concept of ocean eyes. And when I listen to this album, I hear all sorts of things. I hear and see a lot of things when I listen to it. And I think for me, and I've talked about synesthesia a little bit on my channel before, and if you don't know what it is, synesthesia is a crossover of two or more senses. So that might mean that you can smell something and you think of a certain shape or it could be um, you hear something and see a color. There's a bunch of different variations of it and the one I have is called chromiosegia which means that my auditory and visual senses cross and so when I see things I can sometimes hear certain sounds that they make to me or vice versa so if I um, listen to music I can see like colors and shapes and these like kind of like animation in my mind of um, just the way that's like the way my brain hears sounds is through visuals. So when I hear uh, Ocean Eyes, it's a fantastic album of something that does a lot for my synesthesia. And so I want to give this an album cover that's like really awesome <laughs> because I see so much when I listen to this album. So I want to have some really cool colors. I want to try to work in a really cool gradient and some really nice types so we can modernize it a bit of what, how like I would approach this album cover if Adam Young himself asked me to <laughs> design this album cover today. Would that happen? Probably not. Um, but that would be really cool if it did because wow, this album is great. So, all right. Uh, now this is what I normally sound like, but I have to wear these top ones because uh, my top teeth are really messed up, so I'm really sorry. 
but we have to keep going. <laughs> All right, so I started a small mood board of just generally what I was liking, what I was kind of thinking for this cover. Now I like the use of like gradients and I wanna do something really cool and I'll show you guys a, kind of like a cool technique that I've been using if I want some really distorted gradients and things that I can do with them. Wow, I never really realized how many S's I say until I have these. Ugh. I want some really cool, wide, heavy, fun type. I don't know exactly what type I'm gonna be using. I wanna use a lot of blues and a really clean format. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. Okay, so now that my computer's had a little tantrum, we are back. Right here, I have a mood board of what I'm kind of thinking. I wanna play with some really fun gradients. I wanna have some really fun text. And I kinda wanna revolve all of this around the color blue and some really fun textures to go with it. And my main focus is going to be the type because Ocean Eyes is a very vague title, but I wanna be able to infuse that with the kind of like a movement with a gradient and maybe if it's not too cheesy, try to work in some water textures as well. So. I have this little bit here. I like this kind of like crumb look down here. I love the water, love the clouds. I like this overlapping type right here. Love this font right here. I like kind of like this photo reel type of graphic right here. Love this type of lockup with like text on top and a graphic on the bottom. Love this gradient, cool type, cool type, cool gradient. Now, with that being said, we're gonna go into Photoshop and get started. How is it already not responding? I haven't even opened it. 2020 has given me lots of hard times. All right, Photoshop is almost done opening and now my camera's half dead. Okay, so we have our artboard set up. I just did 2000 by 2000. So like always, the first thing I'm gonna do is, mm, usually I like to start with type, but maybe for now, let's play with some colors and gradients. So I'm gonna grab this photo right here because I really like these bright blues in it. I'm gonna make sure all of this is in RGB because I'm working in RGB because I can. All right, so we got that going. And I also really like some of these colors in here. Okay, well, let's just start with this. So what I like to do is I'm gonna just pull that down to the bottom and then I'm gonna start a new layer and I'm gonna start pulling the colors that I like to kind of make what would be like a gradient map in Illustrator, but I'm just gonna be doing it in Photoshop with a really big soft brush. Actually, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to stay within the bounds of my canvas because I don't want my gradient or my soft brush to go off the edge and get a really hard line. Okay, kind of like this green better. So I'm just gonna add a color overlay to this guy. Okay, so that's just the color difference. And I'll just keep the yellow in there for now. Okay, so I'm gonna group these, hide them, and then I'm gonna pull maybe something like this off white and add it as my background layer. Maybe something a little bit lighter. Erasing those two, and so we have this shape. So I'm gonna duplicate it, hide that one, save it, just so we don't lose our work. And then I'm just gonna hit Command E, which is gonna merge all of it into one thing. So hopefully I didn't, okay, so we got a little bit of a hard edge there, um, and I'm assuming we have it on the bottom. That's fine. So what I like to do is just hit Command T for transform, and go down to warp. Now, this is where things get really fun. So you, like, you know, like, if you're familiar, you can, like, you know, warp things like this, but what I'm gonna be doing is pulling these corners and across and you can get some really fun and interesting effects like this like that a lot of fun cool shapes so there's that one I'm gonna hide that duplicate this hide the original and then I'm gonna hide the yellow just so I can you know have a varying option so hitting command T again going into warp let's see what that gives us okay something cool into it let's keep going not as impressed with that. Um, I wonder if I grab my background layer in that art and then merge that and then try to do this warp function and actually get those lines that cross over. Okay, that's interesting. Not sure how I felt about that, but we'll, we'll move on. So that is like, you know, you have these two shapes that you can do a lot of really strange uh, and fun things with. And then of course, like I can add a, a, a and, and, there we go, and adjustment layer and really start to change some of these. And maybe I, like, I just want to apply that to that one and then have like some cool overlay effects like that. 
So another thing that we can do, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and maybe I want to work with this dark blue some more because I really like that. So I'm gonna make some like, some bigger blotches of this blue and then pull in some more of that bright teal. Maybe change my brush size a little bit. All right, so that's what that layer looks like. And now for, oh, I went off the edge right there. Oh well, oh, we didn't. Just kidding, okay. So one of the options that we can do is take this and go up to filter, distort, wave. And we can get some really crazy effects this way. You know, some stuff like that. Can really wave it up like that. And then we can go into, so either you can do the smudge, I believe it's called. Where does she live? Yeah, I believe it's the smudge tool. This usually really slows a computer down because it requires a lot of computing power. So we're gonna go up into liquify. I'm trying to do some fun things with this via liquify. So I think it would be cool to make kind of like a loose flower shape. Okay, so we got that and we got that fun shape in there. I'm gonna go in and just erase this weird little part that's going on over here. I'll soften up my brush. And then maybe I do an adjustment layer on that. All right, so we got that shape going on. And I'm starting to think that like, one of these greens isn't sitting well with me. So I'm gonna try to change it. Okay, of course, Command J, hiding the original, and then Command E to merge, and let's see what our other layers look like. So I'm thinking I wanna have like some cool texture in the back, obviously, because that's what we're, that's what we're needing. I think what a really cool thing to do with gradients is to like cut them out into weird shapes. So I'm just gonna grab this and throw it into a mask and get that really harsh cut line right there. So we got some cool watery textures. Now let's throw that under there. Maybe we don't like that shape. Let's try a different shape. Maybe we try a circle. Mm, honestly, that one isn't really vibing with me. I really like what's going on here. This one I think needs some help. What does this one even look like? Mm, okay. Maybe we just ditch it. So we got that shape over there. Not sure how we're feeling about it. Oh well, I'll just turn it off for now. But let's go head over to Unsplash, which is one of my favorite free photo websites to use if I ever need something really quick for a project like this. Let's just search water, see what happens. So this one has some really good texture. I like those reflections. So I'm gonna download that one. And I think this is really cool too. All right, so we have all this nonsense going on. I do want to add another gradient in the background. And I think I wanna change up some of the colors that I used here. I think like a lighter blue like that would be cool. So I'm just doing this through color overlays. I have that right now is white, that one is that. Okay, so if I take all these other ones off, I have a lot of these cooler toned colors, which is generally what I'm going for. So I'm going to merge that and maybe might be a fun little experiment if I just combine, combine, wow. Confine this to a circle. So just to hide everything else, that's what we're dealing with. So, I mean, if you want, you can just convert this to a smart object so you can go back on it. Cool. I like that a lot. Okay, I think I need to rework these colors. So let's go into my image, do do adjustments. Maybe I'll throw a gradient map on this guy because sometimes that works really well. What would it look like if I just made this into an eye shape for ocean eyes? Is this gonna be a cursed image? Maybe. Oh my God, it is. <laughs> Forget I ever did that. <laughs> okay, so we got our flower up there. Shrink, oop, not you. Ooh, I like that a lot. What if we switch that back to white? Mm, now I kind of like it as that off, off white color. Now that I've changed this a million times, I think I want to just add some more little 
little doodads. Nope, not that color. I do think now I wanna start bringing in some orange. Before it was a little much, but let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go in and find one of my pencil brushes. I think that's cute. I like kind of like these loose doodles of, you know, nothing really serious. I'll set that to dissolve so it looks a little bit rougher. I'm gonna erase little bits of it. I don't like that part very much. That kind of like fades in and out. So it looks like it's kind of like cradled in this little like ocean wave. And then I wanna kind of come up with like a cool block of color to put back here. I'm gonna take my lasso and kind of like draw random squiggles in it. And then command shift I to inverse, mask it out, cut some of those shapes out. Just as like a little subtlety down there. Um, and then on this one that's set to, hmm, kinda like it without. What if I just set it to normal? Okay, I'm kinda fine with that. For this one, I'm gonna use my brush and just get rid of the top part right there that's sticking out. And then for this original green one, what do I wanna do with you? Hey, let's try to warp this again. Now I think it would be fun if we added another one of these squiggly shapes, kind of like another loop-de-loop -loop of kind of what I did here with the flower. Okay, so now that we have all of this going on, I'm going to group all of this. Hmm, what if we put it all in a circle and broke some of it out of the circle? Might look terrible, might look cool. Put that in a mask. Switch to a soft brush again. So I'm gonna leave that part tucked in and then I'm gonna break some of this. So I am going into this group right here, that flower, and then it should be that one. Yeah, okay. Bringing those to the top so they break out of that shape a little bit. And maybe for this flower, so it doesn't look so childish, I'll get rid of this. Now here is where the fun begins of going and looking at some types. So I'm gonna head over to my Adobe fonts and see what is going on over there. Hmm, I kinda like that better. Okay, back to Adobe fonts. Let's check out what we have going on. And if you look at like the original album cover, like it has this, oh my God, that's straight off the font right there. So we're gonna try to do something better than that. So really liking that. Maybe something that'll go really well with that is this font, I think it's called Galliard. Yeah, Galliard, okay. So if I did maybe Owl City and that scaled that down a lot. I really like that effect going on back there. I'm gonna screen shot that just so I can have it. Okay, now stay with me here. I know I pulled these really close together. Okay, so I'm gonna make a stroke on this in the same color as that. Set it to the outside. Might bump it up a little. And then I go up to my fill and drop my fill to zero. Not as wild about that as I had hoped. Maybe I can just play with this until I'm happy. I do really like how those two like overlap right there. I think that's really fun. Okay, I'm into this so far, feeling good. Uh, let's hit save. And then here we're gonna try out Ocean Eyes. What was that font called? Oh, not the news app. No, no, <laughs> Brevier. Brevier, who knows? Brevier. Okay, I'm feeling this. I think there is a lot of fun things going on. Does that look a little stupid? Yes. Is that still stupid? Yes, we're gonna get rid of it. Okay, maybe that font isn't working. I kind of like that better without that main flower. Ooh, okay, now we're talking. Now for this, um, 
I'm not gonna tell everyone this, but I will tell you guys, is how I achieve kind of like that overprint look that I've done in some of the stuff I posted on Instagram. So typically I start with regular text. I add a really heavy stroke and Helvetica is a great font for this because it reads really well even when you distort it. So I'm just going to duplicate this, save it real quick. And then I'm gonna just, you can rasterize the layer um, and then rasterize the layer style. And then I'm gonna make an active selection and then we're gonna go to here, actually before you do that. So we have an active selection, I'm gonna hit L for lasso or just whatever you hit to pull this up and go up to select and mask. Ignore that line right there because that's just the layer on top. So I'm going to start smoothing out this selection. So that starts with bumping up my smooth, bumping up my feather. So you see it start to happen here and then I'm gonna pull this contrast up all the way. And you can shift your edge in or out depending on the look that you're going for. I might kind of go in so it looks a little bit more distorted. Um, and then I'm gonna go down here to solid color and fill it to the color I actually want. And then boom, that's how I get that. So that's, well technically, that's the original text and then that's with the effect I put on it. Original, so that's where we're at right now. Maybe it'd be cool if we, if we did like a gradient overlay on this, be, that'd be fun. All right, I'm liking this, feeling good. Maybe I will duplicate this and add a bit of an effect to it. So we're gonna go up to filter. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's down in stylize, wind. All right, so you can get some really cool effects with wind depending on uh, what it's used on. Stagger is usually like one of the better ones. Mm, I'm not really feeling that gradient anymore. I kind of like it just plain. But while we're here, let's add a cool little track listing on the front and just some more like small text info. Okay, after some more playing around, so I have this text and honestly, I'm kind of over it. And I know that sounds stupid because we just did all that work, but I'm still gonna like keep that part in for the most part. But I really like kind of like all this text being like the same hierarchy, but I wanna kind of find a new way to fit it in here. Honestly, I think we should keep it all black. Okay, so before we waste any more time, let's add a track listing on the front. Do they normally do this on albums? No, but sometimes they do, so. All right, it'd be cool if I could add like a wave right here. Maybe we try that as our finishing touch. We are wrapping up, boys and girls. I'm pretty happy with that, cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mock this up, I guess on a vinyl, and maybe I'll throw it into a Spotify mock-up as well. So let's go. just pop in on here real quick to let you know that today's video was sponsored by Squarespace. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that Squarespace is an amazing partner and I have been using Squarespace for the past four years to host my own website and portfolio. Squarespace is offering my viewers 10% off their first purchase. Just go to squarespace.com slash Lauren, that's K-E-L-L-A-U-R-E-N, or you can hit the description in the link below if you wanna 
sign up that way. Now, why should you use Squarespace? Biggest thing is you can sell your art online. Their e-commerce platform is super easy to use, it's super integrated. You can even print shipping labels through Squarespace. Or if you're getting started, you're a new designer setting out into the world, you can host your portfolio or gallery, whatever it may be through Squarespace. There's an, a bunch of amazing, beautiful templates that are easy to use. And they're also a really great way to show off your work, make your website look professional, make it look nice, you know, give people a reason to hire you. And of course they have 24 seven customer service email support. And I can't tell you how many times that I have hit up Squarespace with an issue or a question I have about my website and be like, hey, how do I do this? They're always like, hey, you know what? Here you go, here's the answer. They're absolutely amazing. Their customer service is award-winning for a reason. So if Squarespace is up your alley, go head over to squarespace.com slash K-E-L-L-A-U-R-E-N and use code KELLORN for 10% off your first purchase. Why wouldn't you use it? So go save that, save that coin and head on over. So again, that's squarespace.com slash KELLORN, K-E-L-L-A-U-R-E-N. Back to the video. <laughs> All right, it is that time of the video where I am at all. Let me let me let me try, let me try that again. <laughs> I feel like Joe Biden. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had a lot of fun making this album cover. This is kind of like more of the style of stuff that I enjoy doing, and it's not really something I get to do very often. So yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. If you would like to see more album covers redesigned, I guess, you know, let me know down in the comments. They have to have like semi-sentimental value or kind of like meme groups, kind of like Owl City. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you want to work with me, I am taking only a few clients. I'm very selective about who I work with. And if you want, you can shoot me an email. My email will be down in the description box below, or you can email me through my website, which is also in the description box below. As always, uh, make sure you subscribe down below if you aren't subscribed to me already, because why wouldn't you be? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I truly enjoy you sitting down for these long videos with me. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Goodbye. It'll roll out.